welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, welcome back if you watch my videos. And if you do, I thank you so, so much. I'm down here on the floor because I want you to get a good look at what we are making today. I love to upcycle and turn ordinary thrifted items or just discarded items into beautiful pieces. And purses, I do a lot of clothing and accessories. Purses, I gotta say, are my first love though. For years, I only made and sold purses. And today we're working on this one. Now, this is just a basic rectangle pattern. And it might look kind of elaborate and hard to do, but really, if you have a basic concept of a sewing machine, it's I don't think anything on here is really that hard to do. It's just knowing the steps and how to get to this final product. So at the end of this uh, video, I have a slideshow of other purses that I've used just a basic rectangle pattern, but you'll be amazed at all the different things that you can do. So let's get started. The first thing that I need to do is make a pattern. And believe me, this will probably be the most simple purse pattern I have in all my tutorials on my channel. It is just a rectangle piece of copy paper, eight and a half inches across and 11 inches long. And I chose this size. This is one of the smaller bags that I've made. And I chose this size because this is my inspiration piece, this rhinestone seafoam green necklace. And it's not that big. And I want it to be take up a lot of the front, across the front. So I kind of chose my pattern according to that. Now, if you have a different embellishment, a belt or a larger necklace, you know, add an inch or two to each side or three. Make it any size that you want. But this is what we're starting with. So I had to choose the fabric that I want for the body of my bag. And this is tan suede. I knew I wanted this for the fringe. And I used to make the body of the bag out of these suede and leather jackets, but I stopped doing that a few years ago because I found that when I sew the strap on the sides, I have to go over that strap with the sewing machine like five or six, seven times, and it would cut the suede, just my stitches. So I stopped using suede and leather on the body of my bags and went to fabric, but I still use suede and leather for the fringe. So I know I wanted, I knew I wanted to use this color. So I had to choose a fabric for the body of the bag. And this is what I selected. I wanted it to be very close to the fringe color. This is like a faux snake skin. It's fabric, but it has the pattern of snake skin. And I love texture or in small pattern. I could have chosen like a pair of khaki pants that would have matched, but that would have been so boring. I like a little bit of texture. So I had two other choices. I'll show you just in case you want to know my thinking when I'm out there looking for stuff. So I found this jacket and it's very textural. They're actually little strips of fabric sewn to like a black netting. Now I could have used something like that because it has interest in texture. And I also have this and I don't know what it is. It's not a curtain, it's not a bedspread, it's just a blob of fabric, but it also has a very subtle textural pattern. And so those are my options. I'll probably end up using this for the lining but I'm going with the snake skin for the body of the bag. So I need to open, cut this open, open it up so that I can trace my pattern on here. And so what I typically do is first cut off the sleeves at the seam. And then I cut across that shoulder seam. I got lining in the way here. Okay, and so that lets me open this up. So then I just have fabric to work with. And on this one, I may be possibly using the sleeve. 
I'll cut down that underside seam and open that up as well. And I just kind of want to see what size it is, see if my rectangle, I can get a rectangle out of this, my eight and a half by 11. Okay. Okay, for mine, I am going to, I need two of these rectangles, one for the front and one for the back. One I will take out of the back of this jacket and I just line the center up. There is a seam and that's okay. I just line the center of my pattern up with that seam. And the other rectangle will be out of the sleeve. So I will just trace this like I did over on the sleeve. And now I'm just cutting it out. So now I have two eight and a half by 11 rectangles. Now what I want to do is just work on one side at a time. And I always work on the front of the purse because it's always more elaborate and I like to get that done. So I will just choose which one I want for the front of my bag and set the other one aside for now. And the next step I want to do is create a three inch band of fabric to go across here. And I found this blouse at Goodwill. And I just love the colors, the sea foam, in there went well with my necklace and so that's why I chose this and it's kind of a sheer I would have liked it to have been a little more thick but that's okay and so what I'll do now is I will just play with it and I need to choose a section a three inch wide section eight and a half inches across that I want to put here and there's a lot of pattern here so I'm going to take my time and just kind of eyeball what I want to go right here and I'll show you the section that I choose. So this is the piece that I chose and it will approximately go here. I just first want to show you to make it simple to cut out what I did was just created a pattern eight and a half inches across because that's how wide our pattern original pattern is and I went three and a half inches tall and then once I selected the area that I wanted, I just laid it on there, traced around it, and cut it out. Okay, now I want to prep it to sew. I just want to sew this band on. And so I want mine one and a half inches down from the top. And so I just measure in like three spots. I measured here one and a half inches down and stuck a pin. I'll do the same in the center one and a half down, stick a pin there, and then I'll do the same at the very end. And then I will fill in with as many pins. This is sheer, so it shifts around a lot. So I'll probably put a couple more pins in than I typically would. And then I will, this line is what's most important to line that up. Okay, so I will finish pinning this. I will pin all the way across the top, down the sides, and across the bottom. Now that I have this all pinned, I will go to my sewing machine and I will use a fairly small straight stitch. I always use a fairly small straight stitch. I don't want it too big. And I don't want it so small that it will take forever for me to sew this. So, and I'll use tan thread. And I will just go along the sides and completely around. And I'm just staying real close to the edge here. Okay, so I have the band all sewn on. And what I want to do now is cut the fringe. 
And this is a thrifted, genuine suede leather jacket. And when I get these home, I put them in my washer and dryer. Back in the day when I was selling them, if I, you know, sometimes they would smell weird or smoky or something like that. And I couldn't sell fringe that smelt weird, but I didn't want to spend 50 bucks to dry clean it either. It would so eat into my profits. So I tested it out and threw it in the washer on cold and then in the dryer and tumble dried it on a hot setting. And they turned out just fine. They shrink a little bit. And now and then you'll get like a water spot. But this one doesn't have any of that. It turned out just great. And you want to dry it in the dryer. If you line dry it wet, it gets super stiff and you don't want that in the dryer. It just comes out nice and soft. So let's make some fringe. The first thing I want to do to get things rolling here is I just take my electric scissors. These are pink power electric scissors that I got on Amazon. And I cut the sleeves off. And then I cut across the shoulder, the top of the shoulder seam there. Now this one has a shoulder pad. So might take me a couple tries. I just cut into the collar because I don't typically use the collars for anything. Okay, so now we see, we know what we're working with here. And I'll remove these buttons because I like this chunk of fabric or this chunk of suede here. And I'll get those buttons removed and I'll show you how I sort of cut this up for fringe. Okay, so I have the buttons removed. The back panels and the sleeves usually give me my largest chunk of fringe without seams. I don't want any seams in my fringe, so I will just start cutting alongside any seams and just get a pure piece of suede. up on here. Oh, the tag. Okay, so there I have one. And I'll just keep cutting sort of as big a chunks as I can get out of my jacket. And then I'll kind of evaluate how long my fringe can be because it will be depend dependent on what size suede pieces I get out of this jacket. I have four panels of suede here and this purse doesn't have as much fringe as some of my other purses do. Sometimes I just have tiers of fringe and a bigger purse and it takes like two jackets to get all that fringe. And it's fun. To, you don't have to find jackets that match exactly if you're doing a ton. Get one that's a little darker or a little lighter. It's really fun to see all those different shades in there. But anyway, I decided I want 10 inch fringe. I just measured, this is where I'm going to sew my fringe. And I measured 10 inches down, which is about there. And that's about where I want it. It's kind of shorter. This is just a more, a little bit more modest, but still beautiful purse. Shorter fringe, not as much fringe. I've made fringe to the floor. I've had people ask me, they want a shoulder bag with fringe to their ankle. And those are a lot of fun. You have to get like skirts to find fringe or leather pieces that long. So anyway, I will just lay my ruler here. Here's my 10 inch mark. I will just take my scissors. Now I have four panels that are 10 inches long. Now what I'm going to do is just go to my cutting mat, any cutting mat will do, and lay my suede on it. And I have my straight edge here. And I have, any rotary tool will really do. Mine has a titanium blade. They are a little bit stronger and more durable. They're really nice for cutting leather. So I will not measure anything here. I will just cut. Now this piece is kind of wonky. I throw that first piece away always. And now I'll just go 
cut strips. And mine are typically between, they're never ha quite half an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch or slightly larger. But you can make yours as wide as you want. Now I will just keep doing this until all four of my panels are cut and I have all my fringe. I have my fringe all cut. I always have my little purse piece sitting next to me and lay them on there to make sure I like how it's looking and see if I have enough. It's just kind of fun to see how it's coming along. So I will take you to my sewing machine now and I will show you how I sew these on. I sew them on one at a time and you can either sew them down with the right side up or the wrong side, but I like to mix it. The back is lighter, the front is darker, and I like kind of that blended color, those two different colors. I just think it gives it depth and interest. So I will kind of alternate, maybe do a few of the lighter, a couple dark, whatever I feel like doing. Okay. Okay, so now I'm sitting at my machine. I have my pile of fringe. And I'm just setting that to the right of my machine. And I'm taking my purse front that we sewed that band onto. And I am going to slip it under the presser foot about, I want to start the fringe about quarter of an inch in from the side. A little over quarter of an inch probably, not quite half. And I will be sewing it. I will be butting it up to that stitch line and it can go under that stitch line of this fabric because we will be doing other things on top of that to cover it. So I'll just bring my piece of fringe, slip it under my presser foot and I will try to stay fairly close to the top of that fringe and then I'll stick my needle in. Maybe I'll do a stitch and back stitch and have it set on an eight for me. So I have a brother machine and on mine, a fairly small stitch, it doesn't take me forever, is like an eight. So then I take my next piece of fringe. I feel like I'm talking really loud because I'm really close to my phone now. So if my volume of my voice went up, that's why. And I will overlap these. So I will overlap, lift up my presser foot and overlap the other one. And I won't go very far. I'll leave my needle in so I can lift up my presser foot. And I will overlap them at least halfway. I like them full. So I will maybe even go a little more than halfway. And so that's all I'm doing here is just when I pick up my presser foot, I'm laying this on top of my other piece of fringe. And I'll just go a couple stitches, lift it up. Lay another one in, overlap it, put my presser foot down, a couple stitches. And it, maybe it seems tedious, but it really isn't bad. I don't mind doing this, and it doesn't take terribly long. So I'll just do that until I'm all the way to this end, and I'll stop a little over a quarter of an inch from the end. all sewn onto the front. Now at this point if you want to, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, it just depends on the project. Here's my stitch line at the top of the fringe. You can trim that a little bit if you want. I don't always, it just depends sometimes what I'm adding to it. Okay. Now what I want to do, which will require a little hand sewing, is I want to do some gold chains sort of down the center here. And I always lay my little statement piece, my focal point on my bag just to look at it. It's not sewn or anything, just so I know things are coordinating and looking nice. So I'm basically, I have a drawer full of chains when, it, you know, broken necklaces and things like that. I just throw in this little cubby drawer that I have. 
And so these are just all assorted gold colored chains and I'm laying them in the center. And when I'm all done here, I'll have about 12. And so here's a little cluster of three. And all I do is just sort of cut off any the hardware like clasps, things like that. And then I cut them to the length I want and I want mine about eight inches. And then I'll lay them, eyeball it, and sort of see where I like them. And I think that looks good. I have about a width I'll measure for you here, but it's about this wide. And now I will try to center it. So my bag is eight and a half across. So about four and a quarter would be my center, which would be right here. And I have that lined up pretty good. And my cluster of chains is about three inches wide. Now I will get out my threaded needle and I might mark with a little marker. That way I can take these chains off. I'll put a little dot where I want those to end and a little black dot where I want those to end. That way I can remove these and I don't have to keep measuring or worrying about where they go. And I will just take a needle and thread. I'll use gold thread because I always like to match the color of the jewelry that I'm sewing on, not the color of the fabric. And I'll just put a few stitches at the top of each one of those little rings. It really won't take me terribly long. This is kind of easy. And I won't try to sew into that suede. I'm coming right into the fabric just at the top of that suede. Okay, so my chains are all sewn on. And when I get the last one sewn on, I bring my needle through to the back and then I just tie it off in the back. Now you gotta be careful. This is already adding weight to my bag and they can get very heavy actually. So you gotta be a little careful embellishments that you choose because I've had them over three pounds before and you have to really disclose that if you're selling that because somebody who has back trouble or something and doesn't want to carry around a three pound bag, but I always try to keep them under two pounds. This one will be less because it's smaller, but they can get quite heavy. So just be careful embellishments that you choose. The next thing I'm going to do here is add some braids and they range from about 12 inches to 14 inches. Now this one is just a yarn braid with some ivory and some tan. This one has a little piece of that shirt that I used for this, a little piece of fringe and a little piece of lace. Now this one is just all lace strips and this one is two lace strips and a little piece of um, bed sheet. And so I'm just going to go to my machine and just below the knot, I will sew that right above that leather fringe on each one of these. And I may go over it a couple times. These aren't very heavy or anything, so I may just go over it once and I will get those sewn on. So the next thing I want to do is just add a little trim around my band. And I chose this lace. It's kind of a off-white or ecru color and I will stitch it just barely above that suede fringe line. I don't want to sew into the suede, plus I have those chains there. So I will just go slightly above it and I won't pin this or anything. I'll just take this piece to my machine and stitch it on there with a fairly small straight stitch. And then I have a smaller piece that I will do to this top seam up here. And I will just stitch that across the top. 
And then when I get those stitched, I found this little gold um, scrap. I don't even know where it came from, really. <laughs> and then I will sew that. I will overlap my lace and just sew that along there. Very simple. So I'll go to my machine and just get those sewn on. Okay, I got that sewn on, and on this one, I went all the way to the edge with it. Now what I want to do is, I want to add a little row of feathers on this very last piece of fringe here. Now if you sell, people either love or hate feathers, but you do what you love, because if you like it, somebody else will. You cannot please all the people. And I love feathers. I think they add texture and softness. And I am using white feathers. I will do four or five. And how I attach them to this is with beads. I have a few blue beads. And I cut my fringe to a little point. And these have large holes. That's pretty important. I just stick the fringe through there. And slide it up. And then I take a hot glue gun. Mine is a mess. <laughs> it's I've had this forever. Okay, and so what I'll do is I'll take a feather, and at the very tip, I'll just put a little dot of hot glue, and then just slide it in underneath of that bead. And then I'll just continue to do that until I have it looking full in the way that I want it. Now that my feathers are all on, I want to finally add my statement necklace. Now, my statement necklace is kind of permanently in a curved position. And on this bag, I don't want it curved. I want it to go straight across. So what I'm going to have to do is there's a little ring that attaches these pieces together. I'm just going to have to take my needle nose and just open that ring off up and release these pieces. I'll have to, I'll be sewing them on individually. Easier said than done, right? It's a stubborn little ring. Okay. So now this is not attached any longer and now I'll be able to lay them straight across so I'll get this ring off and then I'll just give you a little briefing on how I sew it basically it's how you sew any other jewelry okay so I have it laid out how I want it and I left these chains attached and I'll be doing something with those after I get this sewn on. But how I usually stitch like a big piece like this, usually it's attached, but mine is unattached and that's okay. I just do it a little bit differently. So I will just sew the middle one first because I know I want that in the center. And I will just sew two key areas and then I'll move in to move over to my next one and sew like two key areas and same with this one, and that gets them positioned. And then I don't have to worry anymore about if they're getting shifted around or lopsided. Once I have a couple key um, areas sewn on each and they're secure, I'll go back in and I'll secure it even more with more stitching. And I will use gold thread because this has gold hardware on it. 
I always match my jewelry and not the fabric that I'm sewing it onto. So I'll get those sewn on. Now my necklace is all sewn on. And the last thing I want to do to the front is remember these chains that I said I was going to leave? I want to add something to the bottom. And I have these earrings that I made a while back. And I'm going to add those to the bottom of the chains. I already did this one. And now I'm going to add this one right here. And this chain has a lobster claw clasp still attached, so that makes things nice. But what I have to do to this earring is snip off with my wire cutters that hook that goes in the ear. I don't want that. Okay. And now what I'll do is take jump rings. These are jewelry making jump rings and I get mine on Amazon, but you can get them at any craft store and even Walmart. So I need to add one of those to the end for something for the clasp to grab onto. So I will just take these two small jewelry making needle nose pliers and just open that up. This is so easy. Okay, and then I just slide my earring in there. And then on this one, I left it open and added it to the bottom of the chain. But on this one, since it has a clasp, I'm going to go ahead and close that up. And then just attach it to the clasp. Okay, so now I have more little decorations on there. Now we get to start the back of the bag. Okay, now I can finally use this other piece that we cut out earlier. And I want to do some decorations in the shape of a V and will kind of come down here kind of fringy. And I'll show you that, but first I want to mark out my V. And so I took my ruler and 3.75 inches down from the top, I found the center, which on mine is 4.25 inches over, and I made a little dot. Now, I went down on the sides here two inches and made a mark. You might want to use chalk on this. <laughs> I'm using marker. I use marker all the time. And I went two inches down on this side. Now I am just going to take my ruler and that center dot and then the one on the side, I'm going to connect those. And that way when I'm sewing all my decoration, I know that it will be in a perfect V. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have this fringe from a cape. And I am just going to lay it down on my line. I'll do this over at the machine. And I'll just do a regular straight stitch. And I'll just sew that all along that line using my tan thread. Okay, what I'm doing next, I'll actually do at my machine. I'll lay this in and then layer this next little pile of fringe. So I'm just taking two suede pieces. These are about 11 inches long. And I will lay those in the center there. And then I made another yarn braid, sort of the seafoam colors of that fabric. And I don't want them perfectly even. I'll make one a little longer than the other. And then I'll lay that down on top. And then I just have some little scraps of lace and I'll lay that on top of there. Now I will go to my machine and I want to sew them at the top of this little fringe because we'll have another piece going 
over it and it will hide that stitching. So I want to make sure I'm at the top of that fringe and I will just stitch over that a couple times with the straight stitch on my machine. Okay, now that I have that sewn on, I'm just going to give it a little trim. Well, it's nice and clean. And then I am going to take another piece of lace, a little wider than the ones I used here for the fringe, and I will cover this stitching that I sewed this fringe on with, with this, and just follow that V. So I'll just do a fairly small straight stitch, get that sewn on, and once that's sewn on, I made another braid out of that sheer top and I will sew that. I'll overlap this edge with this piece and sew that on. So now I have this all sewn on and the last thing I'm going to do to the back is I have this vintage brooch with some rhinestones and some opaly looking stones. And it's a brooch. So when I have brooches, I always pin them on first. That way they're nice and secure when I stitch them. So I will pin this on where I want it and it'll be right about the center there. And then I will just go around and stitch that securely, probably around those little tiny rhinestones. Now we have the front and the back all done, and it's time to start putting the bag together. So we want to put right sides together, and we have to move all the fringe and embellishments out of the way in order to do that. And I always bring them up towards the top and towards the center of the top, just like that. And the same if you have any fringes or anything extending past the fabric on this side, on the back. And then all you do is put the right sides together. I have a few threads to pull here. And then pin three sides. You pin the sides and the bottom. We want the top open because it's a purse. And so the easiest way to start off doing this is to just pin the four corners. That way you know everything's nice and lined up when you're pinning the sides. Okay. And now I'll just go through and I'll be pretty generous with my pins. I want to be careful here to make sure everything lines up nicely. I won't make you sit and watch me pin this whole thing. <laughs> but basically, I will just pin all three sides. Now I have all three sides pinned. I'm just going to go to my machine and start here. And I will use a quarter inch seam allowance on this since it's a small bag. I've gone up to half an inch. Sometimes on a larger bag with tons of layering, you wanna make sure you get everything sandwiched in there and then I'll go a little bit larger on my seam allowance. But I'm going to try to stick with a quarter inch seam allowance, a fairly small straight stitch and I will go around it two times for extra durability. This is all stitched now, and I want to turn it right side out, but before I do, I just want to snip these corners at an angle. That'll just help when I turn it inside out to make the points a little nicer without having all that fabric there. So I'm going to turn it right side out, So stinking cute, right? Okay, and I'll poke out those corners and then I will go to my ironing board and I will just put this over the small end of my ironing board 
and just give that seam a little press and try to press the bottom the best I can. I'll show it, I'll stand up and I'll show it to you. Kind of looks messy right now, but after I get that pressed, I'll show you what it's looking like so far. Okay, so this is what it's looking like. Now it's time to add the strap. Okay, so I'm going to be using these two belts for my strap. And if you want to use belts for your strap, it's kind of like putting a little puzzle together. You just kind of find belts that you think will be nice and sewable. You don't want them too thick because that will drive you crazy. Believe me, I know. So I don't buy thick belts anymore because they are just too high, kitty. <laughs> so, you know, I just play with them. It's like a little puzzle. I don't want to see a lot of the animal print. I want to see more of this gold. And so I just kind of play with it and figure out where I want it sewn onto my purse. And I like my straps at 49 inches. And that's kind of small for a lot of people, but I don't like them way down on my leg. I like them like right here so I can reach into them nice and easily. When I made purses, I think the longest strap I made, I used to do custom orders as well. And I think the longest anyone ever wanted was 54 inches. So, you know, that's totally your personal preference. You could even do a short shoulder strap if you want. What I like to do is throw mine around my mannequin with my tape measure. So here's 49 inches where I like my strap and there's the end of this belt and I can't go any further. So I'm going to have to go there and I'm going to leave about half an inch for seam allowance. And I will just go all the way down to the one. And I know that's, going to be about my 49 inches and I just snip it off and now my belt's ready to sew onto my purse okay to sew the strap on I remove this front plate so that I can slide my purse in over top and I pick a side and I put my purse over that arm of the sewing machine I find the side seam because I know that's the center on the side. And then I take the end of my belt that I want on this side and I lay these right sides together. I want to see this animal print, so I will lay it down right sides together. And this is the right side of my purse. And I will just stitch that about five or six times. And you do not need like an industrial sewing machine. You know, have a good denim needle. And if your belt isn't too thick, you should be able to sew right through it. You know, sometimes you have to kind of work with that um, dial on the side and kind of hand push it through if it acts like it doesn't want to. But this one's going just fine. I'll do it one more time. I'll just do a little back stitch here. Okay. That's what that looks like. Now I just want to go over and do the other side. This will be like this. So I want to put the right sides together. Is that right? Yeah. Put it back over the arm of my sewing machine. And I'll stitch that on the same way. Okay. Now that I have my strap all sewn on, I'm going to start the lining. Okay. So I thrifted this dress. It's just a little sundress. And I decided I'm going to use this for my lining. And then I can use the coordinating bottom ruffle for the pockets. And that would be really cute together. Now, this is a fairly thin cotton. 
So I'm going to have to use some interfacing to give it more structure and strength and weight. And so I'm just going to use this Heat Bond Fusible Interfacing Medium Weight. And I'll show you how I do that. Um, if you want to avoid having this extra step, just make sure your lining is somewhat stiff. This is a decorator fabric and it has a nice weight to it, nice and crisp, a little bit thick, but not too thick. Now, if I was to use this, I could stip, skip this step altogether, but I've opted for this one to make more work for myself. <laughs> The first thing I'm going to do to get this dress ready basically is to just cut it open so I can lay it out flat. I'm going to cut all the way down the side, then it will open up. And I'm also going to cut this ruffle off so that I can use it for my pockets. So I'll deconstruct this and come back. And now what I'm doing here is I went back to that original pattern. I have marker all over my hand. <laughs> back to that original pattern that we used for the bag. And I'm going to use that for my lining fabric. There's a slight difference though when you do the lining with that same pattern is you trace the bottom and the top exactly how they are. But the sides, you need to make them a little bit larger. I'd say not quite quarter of an inch, up to quarter of an inch. For some reason, it just lines up so much better when we put it together if you go a little bit larger on the sides. And I have this one traced out. I don't know if you can see it. So now all I'm going to do is just cut out those two rectangles. I have my two rectangle pieces for the lining cut out. And now I'm going to go to my interfacing. This is what it looks like. Kind of comes in a roll. Now there's two sides to this. This side feels kind of fabric-y. And on this side, there are tiny little bumpy glue dots, and I want the glue dots facing me right now. And what I will do is lay my fabric, my lining, wrong side on top of those glue dots. And I will do it on both sides here. This is just how I do it. <laughs> there may be a different way, but I'm not a seamstress. I'm more of a textile artsy fartsy person. <laughs> so, okay. So now I'm going to take this over to my ironing board. Okay. So now I have it on my ironing board and I can see the glue dots. They're facing towards me and I have the right side of the fabric facing towards me. Now I'm going to take a tea towel and cover this because I don't want the glue from this interfacing to get onto my iron. So I will just cover that up and I'll just peek at it, find where the corner is, and I will take my hot iron, no steam, and I will just hold that down for 10 seconds. And then I will just continue moving it until I have it all adhered. I won't be doing this. I just want to press, lift and press. Okay, I'll get that all pressed on and come back. Now that I have the interfacing on there, I have to trim the excess off. And I'm just going to trim all that excess off. Okay, so here are my lining pieces. And now I want to add a magnetic snap closure. Those are pretty much my 
closures of choice. They're easy. <laughs> and so they look like this, if you haven't seen them before. This one is an any. This sticks out a little bit, and they snap together like this. Now, these are a little small. I got them on Amazon. They're very strong. <laughs> oh, my gosh. They're 14 millimeters across. I would actually like them a little bigger, but I have a whole pile of these I ordered and got the wrong size, so I'm just using them up. And then they also come with these two little back pieces. Okay, so if direction matters on your pattern, you want the top of the lining facing you right here and put the snap on towards the top. And I basically want to take this center circle of the back and do my measuring and use that as sort of my marker. So I want to center this this way. Now mine is nine inches long now. It's not 8.5 because I had to go a little extra wide when I drew out my pattern. So 4.5 inches is the center and I want it one and a half inches from the top. So I measure one and a half inches to that little circle in the center of the back and then I just take my marker and I make two little lines right where those slits are on the sides. And then I take a piece of durable like denim or decorator fabric and I just throw this little back on there. I don't, this doesn't, it has to be kind of centered. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I also make two little lines on there. So now what I'm going to do is just sort of fold this over and I want to make the teeniest, tiniest little slit with my scissors right where those marks are. Don't go too big on this. Then your snap will be loose. Go smaller than you think you need to because you can always shove these through something smaller. But if you go too big, it's kind of ruined. Okay, so then your extra... I'm laughing at my marker on my hand. That other piece of fabric, make the teeniest tiny little slit on that one as well. Now I'm just going to choose my innie or my outie. It absolutely does not matter which one I start with. And I am going to slide it through those slits and then turn it around to the back side. See, they're through there now. And then I am going to lay that little square that I cut over top of that. And then I am going to take my back and slide it over top of that. And then I just use whatever weird tool I have. I like these because there's kind of a rubber end. And some people push those tabs in. I push them out. I don't really think it matters. So I will push those out. They're just metal. They'll bend. Okay. And then I just always, now this is going to shake my camera, but I always just give those a little tap to make sure they're nice and secure. And that's what that looks like on the back. And it's perfect on the front. Now I am just going to go to my other lining piece and do the exact same thing with the opposite snap. Okay, so now I have my snaps all done and they just snap together like that. Now I want to make pockets for, I want one pocket on each side of the lining, so two pockets. And so what I did for that is I have this pattern and it's kind of beat up. It's my standard pocket size. It's seven inches tall and six inches across. Just a simple rectangle. Now these pockets are a little different than a lot of my other purse tutorials. These are going to be lined with interfacing just because it's so thin. I want, I don't want them saggy so I'm kind of adding layers to it. So I took my pattern 
and I just traced out two of the lining fabrics and cut them out. And then this was the bottom of that dress that we're using for lining. And I just did the same thing. Cut out this pattern, traced it and cut it out. Only on these two, I did that interfacing like I did on the lining. And it does not matter which side you do it on. If you do it on these or if you do it on these, absolutely does not matter. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is on each piece, I started this one already. I just take one of each pattern and I'm going to put right sides together. And I am going to pin that all the way around. I want to make sure it's lined up nice. And I will pin that all the way around all four sides except at the bottom I'm going to leave a two to three inch gap open that way we can turn it inside out so I will just pin I like pinning that gap first so I don't forget and ac accidentally so the whole thing shut <laughs> done that so and then I will pin all the way around and I did this one. Here's the gap. The rest is pinned. Now I will go to my machine on both of these. I'll start at a pin on the gap and I will do a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around to this opposite pin, leaving this much open approximately. Now my pockets are all sewn together. I jumped a little ahead on this one, but I want to show you what I did. So I am just going to snip off all four corners so that it's at a diagonal. That will just make sure that when I turn it right side out that the corners come to a nice point. And then I'm just going to take that gap that we left open and turn it right side out. Now I'll take my time with this and pull out all the corners. I'll use my scissors. It's kind of a no-no to use your scissors, but I'm always careful. I'm not gonna poke my scissors through the corners, hopefully. So I'll get that all nice and tidy. And then once I do, I just take it to my ironing board and give it a good press. And that, that gap that we left open at the bottom, I folded in those seams or the raw edges and just gave that a good press too. Now at this point, you can stitch over that and close that up, but I'm just going to do it once it's on my lining because I'll need to sew over it to adhere it or to attach it to my lining anyway. So I'll just leave that. So I'm going to go to my ironing board, get this one all pretty, and then we'll attach them to the lining. I pinned this pocket on already. Now I'll show you what I did. So I just centered it this way. And I just kind of eyeball that. I don't measure, but what I do measure is I want this two and a half inches down from the top. So I'll measure each corner and put a pin. Things can get kind of cockeyed here if you don't sort of measure and pin that corner. So that's two and a half inches down. And make sure if you're like me and you didn't sew your gap closed, that it's at the bottom because we won't be sewing the top, but we will the bottom. You wanna make sure that gap's down there. And then I will just stick a pin in each corner. I That's all the pins I use. And so now I will go to my machine and on this, I will just stay, I will sew three sides on each one, and I will stay close to the edge. I don't want to lose pocket space, so I stay very close to the edge, and I will go around that twice, just so it's extra durable. Okay, now my pockets are all done, and it's time just to put these lining pieces together. Uh, can I tell you, I don't like making lining at all. When I get to this part of the purse, I'm, it's just so boring. It's a chore. It's a necessary chore, but the artistry of the bag and everything is 
all done and this is just necessary you got to power through it okay so how you put these together is right sides together and I don't usually pin it when it's just a straight shot like this if it's like a U shape or something I will pin the lining but basically we are just going straight down the side on each side and I will go twice for durability I'll use a quarter inch seam allowance and that's it for now for the lining you just sew the sides nothing on the bottom and nothing on the top now my sides are all sewn together and I am going to turn it right side out only to press it to iron it and then I have to turn it inside out again but I want those seams nice and flat and if it doesn't fit over the end of my ironing board which this probably will not I will just lay it down kind of like this and then just press those seams and then same with the other side I have my seams all pressed and now I'm going to turn it inside out again And now it's time to attach it to the purse. So I have my purse right here. Okay, I'm going to turn it upside down because I want to work with this opening here. And so what I need to do is just make sure this strap is down and out of the way. I don't want it up here at the moment. Okay, and so then I take my lining, it's inside out, and this is the top because we have the snap here. I want to bring the bottom over top of the bag, the bottom of this lining over top of the bag. And I am going to line this top of the lining line it up with the top of the bag and how I do that and then I will pin it all the way around but I'll show you the easiest way to start is to line up those seams we have a seam on the lining and a seam on the inside of the bag if you line those seams up nicely then your snaps are sure to line up on the inside of the bag we don't want our snaps all cockeyed and not working. So if you line the seams up, those snaps will work just fine. And I can't get a pin. So here's my bottom of my strap, my belt. I can't get a pin through that. So I'm just going to pin on both sides of that strap. And when you're sewing this, just go slowly over that strap. You'll have to sew back over top of that. Okay, so now I'm going to the opposite side. The seam on the outside of the lining. Oops. The seam on the inside of the purse. Line those seams up. And put a pin on each side of the strap. So once I have that done, then I know everything else is going to line up nicely. So I will just line the top of the purse with the top of the lining and pin all the way along both sides, the front and back. So now I have my purse pinned all the way around and I'm going to remove this front plate again and I'm going to start anywhere. I don't like starting, if I have a strap like a belt, I don't like starting there. I like to get a good momentum going before I head to something thick on the side. So I will just slide my purse in. I'm going to line this edge up with my side of my presser foot. And I'm using a fairly small straight stitch. 
and I'm just going to sew all the way around. Now I'm going over that belt. So now I have this sewn all the way around the top. I'm going to pull my lining back up over top of the bag like that. Okay, and so I'm doing this while I'm at my machine because now we have a lining with an open bottom and we just need to close that up. And you can press and pin measure all that if you want but all i do is i tuck one corner in and i'm going over half an inch because for some reason the lining gets kind of long at the bottom so i like to go about three quarters to an inch little hem so i tuck the raw edges in on both sides and that, this is where I'm saying you can press that and pin that if you want. But I've done this so many times, I don't really need to. So then I just stick the bottom back in my sewing machine. And I'm lining it up with the edge of my presser foot. And I will just tuck those in as I go. Closing up the bottom so nothing falls out of your lining. Now once I get to the end, I want this to be durable. I hate linings that get holes in them and all your stuff fall through the lining into oblivion or wherever they go. They disappear. The lining's all closed up, and I'm going to tuck it back in the purse now, where it's supposed to be. And I will just take my time here and just kind of play with it and make sure the lining lines up with the corner of the purse. Everything's nice and even. So I'll get that nice and tidy and then I'll come back and show you what I do next. What I want to do last is do a nice top stitch around the top of this bag. It helps the lining stay put and gives it just a nice crisp finish at the top. And so what I do is I take the lining and I could just line, I'm going to iron this. So I don't want to iron it with the seam right at the top because the lining tends to show from the outside if I do that. So I am just going to roll that outside fabric in a little bit and then I'm going to give it a press. See like that? And I am going to do that all the way around my bag. Now you wanna take your time with this part because you're kinda of making sure the lining's nice and smooth and even and everything's lined up nicely at the top. So I will just go all the way around my bag, taking my time and making that nice and crisp like that. Now I have my top all nice and pressed. And at this point, if you would like to, you can pin, put a few pins around there. 
I don't do that anymore. I'm pretty confident that I can sew that properly without pinning it. But um, if you do pin it, pin on the outside because we need to slide this back over the arm of the sewing machine and you will be sewing on the outside and you won't be able to pluck those pins out. Okay, so now I'm just going to put a top stitch and I will match, try to match the fabric the best I can and I will line this top edge with my presser foot and that way I have a nice clear visual. I want this as straight and as neat as possible because it will be seen from the outside. So I'll line this edge up with my presser foot and I usually start on the back because I'll have to end there and the front is my favorite part and anything like that that isn't perfect I want to be on the back. Now this is very, very important <laughs> and it's so such a simple concept but if you don't do this, you're going to have troubles. Take your strap and put it in first, okay, before you slide your bag over the arm. It just gets a tangled mess if you don't do that first. So now I'm just sliding that in, lining the edge up with my presser foot. I'm using a fairly small straight stitch, and I'm just going to go all the way around the bag. I have the top stitch all finished and the very last thing I do is just throw a tea, just lay it down, throw a tea towel back over top of it and I just give that top another little press. Makes it nice and smooth. Then I'll turn it over. And it's snapped at this point. I just want to make sure it's in the position it would typically be if you're carrying it. Okay, I'll show it to you again. Okay, here it is all finished. Nice and easy to carry, lightweight. Here's more of a close-up. Okay, thank you so much for watching.